you very much, and thank you for the invitation to come here and speak at this lovely day. Um, I've been listening to some of the presentations, and I really, really had some extra insights, especially when it comes to ad insertion. And uh, we are a public broadcaster, so we don't do any ads. But I think that the technology actually also can be used for a public broadcaster to insert other things in ads, like uh, local newscasts and things like that. So it's absolutely interesting technology that has been presented so far today. Uh, I'm not going to talk about technology very much. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we, as a public broadcaster, looks at the market and what's happening around television these days. Try to sum it up a little bit and also try to share some of our insights when it comes to the OTT space. So I hope it will be uh, uh, useful for you. A little bit of the NR about the NRK. Uh, we are a public broadcaster, basically just like the BBC, but of course we are a little bit smaller. Not just a little bit smaller, we are way back smaller. But we are license funded and we do television and we do radio and we do internet products. We also like to, uh, are very proud of saying that we are the inventor of slow TV. For those of you who like that, boats, trains, and logging actually also part of that uh, uh, product. And also the inventor and uh, broadcaster of SCUM, which has had a lot of attention over the last years and also sold to other countries as a concept that really drives into the younger generation using social media and also a special form of, of television uh, uh, storytelling. Uh, yes, we have national radio channels and national TV channels. Technology, when it comes to that, we are the only, and welcome to the country, the first one that had turned off the FM network. Uh, all the national broadcasters on radio are on DAB, digital audio broadcasting, but of course also on IP technology as applications uh, for mobile phones and so on. We have a digital terrestrial network in Norway, which also carries our channels, and we do work together with, uh, with uh, uh, TV uh, operators that have cable networks, IP networks, and so on. I'll, I'll get a little bit back to that. Uh, a little bit about our products. We have been deployed OTT-wise on most of the common platforms. As everyone have to be on these days, but we have been on them for some years. Yeah, Apple TV, smart TVs, which smart TVs is actually beginning to be a little bit of a headache again. I'll get back to that. Uh, game console setup boxes. We are on many of the setup boxes of the operators with our application, which is very interesting. And of course, on, on, on Android and uh, tablets and so on. So the television business is actually blooming. It's a great business, even though it's turned upside down for our traditional for us traditional broadcasters. This is the number of households in Norway that has a television, and it hasn't declined very much over the years. So it gives us the possibility still to make good television and reach the audience uh, out there, even though that they are using the television in another way than they have. But we have still have the potential and we still have the devices out there so we can do business with, with, with people. This number has declined a little bit, but not very much. These are the number percentages of households in Norway which have a TV that's also connected to a traditional TV signal, working through the operators, uh, cable operators, satellite operators, or, 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 or a DTT network or IPTV. So basically, even though we are talking a lot about OTT and internet and streaming, S1 and so on, uh, majority is still hooked up with a traditional uh, uh, TV signal. An interesting thing is that uh, the operators also, of course, are developing and also had deployed uh, extra features uh, like applications that they can use in home and out home and also do SVOD and streaming and find all of the, uh, the, the good series they, are, they want to do. Uh, a little bit back to the tele, of course, it's it's not quite true that everyone has a television. Even though, like I said, over 90% have. If you look at the younger generation, we still see or we see that it is a decline in television usage. This is just looking at uh, who has a television and if it's connected. And if you see from the 2029, that's where we have seen a decline in actually having a television out there. 
So if these are the cord cutters, not necessarily, they're probably more the cord nevers uh, out there, the young people that are moving out from home and maybe using their PC and other, other devices to, to, to look at television. So it is interesting and we have to you know, follow uh, these movements, especially when it comes to the younger generation, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it, because for us as a traditional broadcasters, these are the big uh, uh, movements in, in, in television viewing. Uh, this is just uh, looking into uh, the, the daily reach of traditional television and streaming TV and movie. That's long-form streaming, basically. We saw Back in 2013, when we were also starting deploying our services, it was pretty low, like 14%. And it has, of course, uh, grown. 2017, 34%, almost 35% said that they were using streaming uh, TV, streaming movies or series over the internet. 67 still said that they were using also a, uh, a, a, a traditional TV single. Some of them used both, so that's why the numbers quite don't add up. But I think what we should look into is actually the, uh, uh, the demographics of these numbers, because you know, if you're gonna look into the future, you have to see what the young people are doing today. And this is what we are really focusing on today, because there we see that it turned actually the other way around. From 20 to 29 years in Q2, Two, in 27, I have some updated uh, figures, we saw that there were more streaming and more uh, OTT uses, or usage of OTT services than it was of, of uh, natural, more conventional TV uh, uh, watching. And that um, means that we have to do and have to deploy services that really get into uh, what these uh, young people are, 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 are doing and how they are behaving. This is the whole 2017 uh, under one. And this was what I was showing you, the 20 to 29s. And we also now see that this is happening in the 30 to 39. It's been kind of been tipping, tipping over the 50%. So they're using actually more streaming than, more, than, uh, than traditional television. And we will see probably that this tipping point will move upwards when it comes to, to age. So we have to be uh, <clears throat> really on the ball here to be able to actually serve these generations with a new way of watching television. And uh, as we saw in, in Denmark also, we have some cable cutting in Norway. It's not been very much. Uh, last year it was uh, 11,500 less subscriptions when it came to, 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 to pay TV. Uh, that's not very much, to be honest, but it is a tendency which is pretty clear. Because before you also saw that uh, uh, the, the numbers of subscriptions sold were uh, equivalent to how many new households that were adding in the market, because there are like 40,000 new households every year in Norway. And uh, they were actually you know, more, more or less parallel, but now we see a little bit of dip. I don't think it's that much cord cutters, but I think it is a young generation that moves out from their parents and start their own uh, households, not actually uh, uh, paying for, for television as we know it. So more like cord nevers, hard to say, but anyway. OTT is, is growing in Norway. You see these numbers probably all over the world, but the last actually quarters, we've seen a, a very, very high uh, incline in, in usage. This is a daily uh, reach. 37% say that they're using these services uh, daily uh, now, and it's, uh, it's been climbing all the way. No, no hockey stick, but the last, last year we see a, 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 a real inclination on that part. We also see it from our service because our service, NRK TV, which is our player, it's like the BBC iPlayer, and we also have NRK Super, which is, which is the children's player, uh, are pumping out bits and bytes uh, more and more each, each year. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the petabytes we are pumping out, and we see it, it does rise every year. We should probably see that it will rise more, but uh, it's a pretty good uh, rise of, of, of streaming data volume that we see. And 
What we are now looking into is, of course, giving people higher quality. We've been talking about that earlier today with new codecs and higher quality like 4K and so on. Uh, the BBC actually today announced that they are going to do the World Cup in, in 4K HDR for some of their users. They're saying that uh, in the iPlayer, if you access the iPlayer, you can actually get it in 4K, some of the matches. Uh, but only the first 10,000 will be able to see it because, as you know, 4K HDR, 50 frames as they are, are streaming here, it's taking a lot of capacity and will do something very, very wrong, which is CDM build, if you don't have a, a, a very good contract. So they're starting actually looking into it and starting this. It's a beta project, though. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the pickup and how it actually works through the network and it will, if it will give the quality that people um, are, are asking for and if the, the networks will be able to carry that kind of load. Because as far as I know, I'm not sure if they're using the newest codec. So it will be very, very much data transported when it comes to, to, to 4K. That's also something we are looking into. And I think the, the, uh, the broadcast industry also have to cater for this. And many people are asking me, if, when it comes to 4K, where will you transmit 4K? Will it be over terrestrial, over satellites, or cable? I'll say it probably be first over OTT, like the BBC are doing here. So we're following that uh, very, very closely to see how that works. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, just a short look into the, to the, um, the SVOD uh, market in Norway. It probably is a little bit uh, similar in the other Nordic uh, countries. 47%, almost 50%, uh, pretty new figures, say that they have one or more uh, subscription to an SVOD service. And if you see a Netflix, it's, it's the biggest and the most dominating one also in Norway, like in many other countries. And it's a pretty good, you know, space down to, to the others where you see some of the, the Norwegian ones that are holding out and doing a good job. HBO Nordic goes a little bit up and down when it, it goes up when Game of Thrones are available and it goes a little bit down again. Uh, and also uh, via play, which is the Pan Nordic uh, uh, player also, also down there. And our case is not there because we are not a, a pay service but uh, we still are among the, the, the biggest in, in Norway since we are free, that helps. So about 14, 15% of every uh, Norwegian uses our service every day. So that's six, 700,000 people every day using our, our streaming service. Um, but again, it's free and it's, it's very popular. We have about 130 to 150,000 programs available in our iPlayer in, in Norway. Um, so why come to Norway to listen to people talk about OTT and television? Well, I was in, in Copenhagen actually some years ago where I, HS Market uh, presented this uh, survey and they could tell us, this is an American company as far as I know, that Norway was, act was actually the country in the world where they were paying the most for asphalt services, $110 a year. This is in 2016, I don't have any newer figures, so I don't know if some of the other countries have gone, uh, gone, gone by us. Why we are paying so much money and why we are so interesting, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Maybe it was the oil money, but you know, oil prices have gone down, so can't be that either. And some are saying that actually Norway will in the future also be on the top of paying uh, for asphalt services together with some of our friends in, in the Nordics. Okay, so what was the first we saw when it came to programs and kind of type of content that were shifting uh, platforms when it came to usage? Well, I think you know it yourself, and it's, 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 it's not, it's very obvious actually that drama was, the uh, drama series was the first kind of uh, content that shifted from linear to, to, to VOD. Uh, we saw in uh, 20, 12, that uh, time consumed on drama, on linear, was uh, about 87 um, hours in, 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 in general. It fell to 60 in, in 27, 31% down. 
If you get a look at the demographics again, which is more interesting, you look at the 2029, it went from 89 minutes and down to 36 minutes, uh, down 60 minutes in that five-year period. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's no rocket science that drama series has you know, moved from linear to VOD, but the, the numbers are also very clear on that. Another thing that we see more, this is Norwegian, so probably not all of you would understand it, but it was in the paper for some, some months ago. We also see that uh, the type of content that were popular on our VOD service before is not the same content that's popular now. Uh, we saw that the, the big shows that were in prime time, especially on Friday and Saturday, were also the shows that were streamed most on our player. But that's not, that's not what's happening anymore. People are finding out that some kind of content they want to see live, they want to see linear. It doesn't have to be sports, it doesn't have to be news, but it can be game shows and other types of uh, entertainment that feels live, that you have to kind of be there and see it then, even though it's not quite live. They watch that uh, um, live uh, on telly or also OTT, because our live channels are, of course, also available at OTT. And uh, when it comes to, to the more VOD stuff, it's more, like I said, the, uh, uh, the series, the drama, documentary, these are some examples, actually, of what's, what that does work on, on our uh, OTT uh, VOD uh, side. This is from last year. And, Scum, of course, was one of the most popular, and some of the other, this was a drama, a series, and, and so on, were most popular on, on, our, uh, on our player, while these, which are more live-ish entertainment programs, still works very good on linear TV. So you see, kind of see that uh, it, uh, it categorizes as, uh, as it should. So what is happening actually in this market is that um, just to back to the big picture again, uh, we as a broadcaster, especially a public broadcaster, a national broadcaster in smaller countries like Norway and, and Sweden and Denmark, are under a heavy competition of the US California-based uh, broadcasters, if you want to call them that. They call themselves technology companies, which is, was kind of correct, but they're actually now using more and more money uh, on, on, uh, on content than they are on technology. So I will call them now more uh, a content producer than actually a technology uh, company. The technology was the enabler, and that was where it started. But after two years, everybody else got the technology. Even NRK got most of the same technology that Netflix has. Uh, now it's competing on uh, the content and the originals and the series. This is just to show you all the series and programs that were uh, uh, premiered on Amazon, Netflix, and Hulu last year. Uh, many, many, many titles, and just Netflix alone, if you want to look through the 2017 catalog, you have to sit 41 days. Of course, this is, uh, this is not easy for a, a broadcaster, which basically almost had monopoly in, in showing uh, people uh, different kind of content some years ago to actually now having this type of competition where people have so much to choose from that uh, it's very hard to actually uh, be able to bubble up in, in it all. And it doesn't stop there. I was talking about this, a shift from technology focus to content and original uh, programming. Uh, I don't know if you agree. Yes, they say they are a technology company. They have a lot of good technology behind. But still, I think a lot of other broadcasters and the BBC and others now also have much of the same technology. And it's back to competing on the good content, the good series. And yes, they are. Something maybe that uh, Netflix is, is the biggest in the world when it comes to spending money on originals and content. They are not. They're still the more traditional companies like NBC and Fox and Time Warner and also Disney still use more billions than Netflix. This is from, from last year. But uh, they're absolutely getting up there. Netflix and, and Amazon and, and Hulu uh, together also use a lot of money on content. I just put up the BBC here. That's about, yeah, 3.5 billion around there. They're still a big uh, player uh, in, the, in this market, but 
if we should have the NRK, it will probably be the white line here, basically. And we're competing with these guys, especially these guys. So it's, uh, it's a tough one, it is. Okay, I don't know if you're interested in this, but who actually was the one that spent most dollars per uh, subscribers on content last year? Says something about uh, Hulu maybe wanting to take a larger position. They're basically just in the U US, but uh, I think they want to take a bigger position than, uh, than they have and try to compete more against um, uh, the other big ones like, like Amazon and Netflix. Okay, um, that was a little bit how we see the market. I think you see the same things in your home markets. This is uh, some of the things that we can show that uh, we find that people are a little bit interesting in. Uh, we have a lot of traffic on our player, like I said, a lot of data that we can analyze to see, you know, which platform, for instance, are people using when it comes to, to, to streaming media. So this is time spent on long form, so basically TV content, average time, and streaming in total. In 2014, we saw that the PC was the gadget or the device most used for, for streaming, 66%. Television was kind of coming into the market with, uh, with some smart TVs we had deployed on that. Tablets were popular and mobile. And what we have seen now is that there is a big change in actually which platform people want to use and prefer to use when watching OTT content, especially typical TV content. As we want to say, the TV is back on TV. TV-centric uh, devices are now the most popular. It probably has something to do that with that in 2014 and before that, the TV-centric uh, platforms like the smart TVs weren't very good. They were, you know, pretty slow and hard to navigate and didn't work that good. New generation has come and uh, are more popular. Apple uh, has deployed the Apple TV, which is the most popular uh, TV-centric device in Norway. In the US, it's a Roku box, but that hasn't taken off in Norway. Apple TV is still very popular. And you also have Chromecast and the other technologies. I mentioned also PlayStation 4 and also set up boxes which are, are, are driving our, our, um, our application. Uh, and PC is not, you know, if you don't have anything else, you can boot up your PC, but it's not the best multimedia device there is. It takes time and it's, it's not that good. Okay, Qu first quarter uh, this year, we went from 49%, was it, to 56%. So just in a short time, the TV, uh, um, centric uh, viewing has grown even more. So it's over 50% of all viewing. And you'll see the same if you go into the BBC uh, iPlayer statistics, which they have online, you also see that the TV-centric platforms are more and more uh, popular and used more and more for streaming, which is pretty good for us as a broadcaster because we like to work with that format. TV is, is, is good, we know that. And it's pretty obvious, actually, if you want to, if you ask people, we ask people, you know, if you want to see a drama series or a movie or something like that, which screen would you like to watch it on if you, have the, if you could choose? And everybody say, on the TV, of course. You want to see good drama on a big 60-inch, don't you? If you have it there. Of course, if there's no 60-inch or it's occupied by someone else, you'll probably go for, for another type of device. So that tells you, so if you want to, you know, put a whole lot of money into the OTT uh, space, and the S1 and the vault space, you have to put it into the TV-centric platforms because that's where people are, especially when it comes to long-form content. So don't waste a whole lot of money to, to make a, a great PC experience, for instance, especially if you're, if you're, you're broadcasting or have a lot of drama and documentaries in long form in, in your, in your uh, portfolio. That makes sense, right? Okay, I'll wrap it a little bit up. I was asked, you know, uh, when it comes to the broadcasters, especially here in Nordic, who do you fare most? Who are, you know, the big, the big competition? I already told you that Netflix is, of course, one of them. Uh, it's not in other national television stations like TV2 or so on. It is actually uh, the ones that are generated or 
come from California. And I think I can agree with Asher Reed Hastings that also said this just you know, last year, that he finds Amazon scary. And I do agree that I think the next big push on this, uh, in this market is going to come from Amazon. They have launched in the Nordics, but they just started. So it's going to be interesting to see that, how that goes. Uh, of course, also HBO and other uh, of the streaming uh, giants producing local content. They have already done that. Uh, Netflix have uh, titles out there already, HBO also, uh, from the Nordics, which uh, we all we always said that we were always going to be best on the Nordic drama, uh, and we're going to be alone because we are the ones that understand it. But there are good uh, production companies there that are also making Nordic for, 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 for these companies. And of course, if Amazon and Facebook are going to buy the rights for Premiership and for the Norwegian football, that's scary things also. So what do we do in the Nordics when it comes to, to our public um, broadcasters? We say that we're going to cooperate. So we're going to cooperate with Denmark, with Sweden, with Iceland and Finland, and we're going together, going to make more Nordic drama and that we can air uh, on our different uh, VOD services without the problems with rights and so on. So that's, that's one of the things that we are doing on the content side that we hope will, uh, will do something with the competition. I think I'll just leave it there, Ben. I could talk for hours about this, but that was a little bit of the insight of the Norwegian TV market and how we see it and also, you know, the competition out there. Thank you. Let's give it a, a round of applause. Let's move over this time. Sure, we can do that. So, questions for Bjorna. Yeah, there's one over here. If we just wait for the mic, just coming. Sure. It's a little right there. I'll just get my water. Just a short question. The, the spend on Amazon and Netflix was six, about $60 per subscriber. What, what's your spend currently per subscriber or per <laughs> user? <laughs> I, should, I should have known that. Uh, but. But I haven't, I haven't done the numbers there, but um, uh, of course I should. I should have known that that question came. Um, but uh, the, the problem, uh, <laughs> we have to make uh, drama that is just as good as, as Netflix Queen, for instance, because also Norwegian audience wants the same quality that they make. And we're like five million people and we don't have that, um, that kind of money. I think uh, that, uh, you know, uh, we, our drama series cost about a half uh, episode of, of, of The Queen, for instance, uh, in, in, in England. But it has to be just as good. And that's, that's the problem. So we don't spend that, that type of money on our, 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 um, our, our content. And but, it's a big numbers game, right? But yeah. you're making up for it in terms of creativity and innovation, right? Hopefully, hopefully so, we do. Yeah. So you've got this, this you know, amazingly successful series show, Scum, yep. right? Which you, I've learned today, have sold to one of the biggest internet platforms out there, yep. Facebook. Yeah, in the US, so they, they have so uh, bought some of the rights, yes, that's so correct. You've done the reverse. I think that's, that's what you have to do. You have to be bold and you have to be creative when you're working in this market because the big numbers game, they already have 120 million you know, subscribers. They can use a lot of money to make fantastic drama series. We have to, be, uh, we, we have to experience more and, and try to find something new that will, will you know, work. That's so good. it's not necessarily about all the money you put on the screen, but also about you know, what you do with it and how creative yeah. you are. Um, I think um, we heard this morning from Tina uh, Discovery, yeah. you know, it still comes down to the quality of the story. Absolutely. Any other questions for Biana? No, we're not going to do uh, the World Cup in 4K. BBC is going to do it, but we're not. <laughs> I always get that question, so I'm just going to answer it. <laughs> Yet? <laughs> but maybe next never, time. Maybe never next say time. never. Right? Never say never. Maybe next time. So I know that you have to run to pick yes. up your kids. Yes, I have. Which, um, so thank you. Thank you very much.